Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. Today, we're going to discuss how to schedule email reports um, while using an Excel template. Um, so to start off our call, um, I just wanted to introduce myself. My name is Anthony Trainee. I'm the product manager here at DoForms. Um, and in your GoToWebinar screen, you should be able to ask questions throughout the meeting. So if at any point anybody has any questions, um, don't feel like you need to wait till the end. Just go ahead and shoot them over, and I'll see them here, and I'll kind of answer them as I go. Um, so today I'm going to go over how to use the DoForms Report Builder, and more specifically use the Report Builder with a custom Excel template. So out of the box, DoForms comes with a pre-built reporting tool called the Report Writer. The Report Writer allows you to take multiple submissions of the same form and consolidate all of those submissions into a single report. So for example, let's say you had a daily timesheet form and you wanted to run a weekly report of all of the employees' times, clock in, clock out, and total times for that week. You could use the Report Writer to choose your timesheet form, select the name, the clock in, the clock out times, and the total times of the employees, and then you could group them by either the date of the job or the week ending date or by individual uh, people. So essentially the report writer is just a quick and easy way to consolidate a bunch of information into a single report and have it run either daily, weekly, or monthly. Um, we're gonna take it a step further today by discussing the custom template um, option while creating reports. Um, so if you've used do forms before, um, you've probably seen the ability for your individual submissions of your forms to have a custom report template. You know, so these are custom PDFs that are generated through do forms that are created in Excel. Um, and it's the same concept here, except instead of it being on an individual submission, it's going to be on the report that runs with um, a combination of a bunch of submissions. Um, so the example that I'm going to go over today is actually an OSHA reporting form um, that was actually sent to us by OSHA. It's a government form that a lot of companies have to fill out for when incidents occur on site. Um, and we're going to kind of go through and show you um, a full-blown example of a custom template um, and how to use it within the report writer here. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to bring up here is basically the form that we're filling out. Um, so this OSHA form is essentially an incident reporting form. Um, so you can come in here and basically fill out the person's name, um, the type of injury it was, if they're going to miss any days. Um, you know, there's a whole uh, list of questions here that you can basically come in and fill out. Then um, at the end of the month, basically, this information needs to be submitted into OSHA um, in a specific format. So because OSHA requires a specific format, the report writer by default has its own structure um, that we call the report layout that lets you kind of group things together um, and it has a set structure. If you need some type of format that's outside of the default do form structure, this would be an example of how you can use a custom template in this scenario. Um, so once basically this form is filled out, so you can see here, um, just as some examples, I filled out five submissions um, with five different people. And basically, this is the template that OSHA had sent us. So as you can see, um, it's laid out in a specific way. And there's all these different types of fields that are all the fields that were in the forms that we just went over. So out of the box, um, using the standard reporting in due forms, we would not be able to accomplish this format. Um, on top of that, there's also some things in here, like for instance, as I scroll down, you'll notice that there is you know, a couple of hundred rows in here just to account for the couple of hundred potential incidents that could happen throughout a month or a week or whenever you're running this report. Um, so what we're basically able to do is instead of using the default structure, we can use this template here as a report template that we can attach to all of our data that comes through from these submissions. Um, so basically, as you can see here, I have um, the two sheets. So this first sheet here is where all this information, the case number, the employee's name, all the information about the injuries is there. And then they also have a little summary page here that gives you the you know total number of incidents, how many days away from work, and all that good stuff. So basically what we did is we came into do forms and we created a report. I'm going to jump back to the build report screen here. Um, and we had this report created where basically I'm going to pull all of the necessary information. So if you look at the fields here that, I've, that I have included in my report, they're going to match up exactly with the fields that are going to be coming out here. 
Um, but instead, when I get to the bottom of my report in my email schedule tool, instead of using the report layout style, I'm going to use the column layout. And basically what this does is instead of having that structured layout, it's just going to dump all the information into individual columns on a, sp on a specific sheet that you specify. So since I have checked the use custom template option here, um, I can select the template, which I would have uploaded previously in my build form screen um, or in your view data screen. You can upload the templates there. Um, and then you need to specify the sheet that you're going to dump this data to. After you dump all this information to a specific sheet, you can then manipulate that data using all of Excel's tools like macros or um, any, anything like that that Excel has to offer. So I'm going to jump back to my report here and just kind of go over what we did. So as you can see here, I have my data tab, which is blank because this is going to be where my data gets dumped from my report. And then what I have set up here is you'll notice that I'm pointing to the data sheet and I'm basically just pulling all the information over, but in this nice format. So you'll see this one here is pointing to column A, row two on the data sheet. So this would be all of my headers that come in and this would be my first submission. So we basically just went in and we set up all of these links to basically look at the data sheet and pull over the data from each individual column or row. Um, what you end up getting is when the data all gets flooded through here. So let's just say this was case number one, two, three, four, five you would see one, two, three, four, five gets populated in the first row. So that's the first thing that we did. So using Excel, we're able to reference the data sheet and pull the information over into this nice format. But once we have the nice format, let's say I only had the five submissions that you saw here. I really don't want to see, you know, a hundred plus blank rows down here. Um, so what we also were able to do is essentially set up a macro that runs as soon as the report is created. And that macro basically goes in and checks for blank rows. And if the row is blank, it actually deletes it from the spreadsheet. So this is the template that we would upload. Essentially, once I have all of my fields linked, so as you can see here, employee's name is pointing to the B column. And as long as I have set up my fields in my report to kind of match up, so you can see my case number, full name, you know, these are in the same order as I have case number, employee's name um, on my form here. Basically what I'm able to do after I've mapped all of those is save this as an Excel document. Um, if you're using macros, make sure to save it as a macro enabled document, just not just a regular Excel document. And you can then upload this in your due forms, either in the build forms or view data section by just going to the report templates and selecting new. Once you have the template in there and you can set up your report um, by going to build reports and essentially you would just follow through the, the uh, structure here by picking which form you want to report on, the different types of fields that you'd like to include. Um, but once you get to your email schedule point, you would select the column layout and check the box for use the custom template and select your sheet name. So since I said data, it's going to dump to this data sheet. And you can actually hide this sheet. So just because the sheet is hidden on the Excel document, um, that's okay. It doesn't need to be shown. So for example, when you're getting this report, you know, at the end of the month, you probably don't want to see a whole bunch of raw data on this first tab here. So you can actually go ahead and hide this. So I can now upload this document. And even though the data sheet is hidden, all of my data will still be populated on there and it will all successfully come over to all the fields that I have mapped. Um, along with that macro that I had set up that basically when the document opens, it's going to check for any blank rows. And if there are blank rows, it's going to delete them for me. So I'm going to jump to a completed one here. So as you can see, my data tab is deleted or hidden, excuse me, not deleted. Um, but the five submissions that I have, one, two, three, four, five, which are the same submissions that you see here in my view data tab, one, two, three, four, five have all come into my document successfully. They've all mapped successfully. And basically they um, populated themselves and you'll notice that there's no longer, you know, a hundred empty blank rows at the end of my report. 
So this is this would be an example of what I would get at the end of the month um, or at the end of the year, where I could have all of my incidents documented in one document. Um, if I jump to the secondary sheet, we did the same thing here, where basically we're just pointing to the different sheets um, and we're basically mapping information from one sheet onto the other one. Um, so you can also see in this document here, um, you don't have to populate everything. If you have some inputs that you'd like your company or your user to do after the fact, that's also possible as well. So this is now a live Excel document and I could come in here and fill out all this information. Um, so basically for this example, what the companies will do is they'll come in here and fill out all this information before they submit it to OSHA. Um, just to kind of show you, if I click unhide, you'll notice that I still have my data sheet. And this is how the column layout looks like on my data sheet. So it basically dumps all of the headers in the first row, and then each submission kind of goes down row by row. So this is the structure that it does. If we had done the report style structure, it wouldn't be like this. It'd be more like a structured report with a header, a footer, a section in the middle for the data, and the data would be broken up based on whatever you chose to group it by, either by the name or the date or anything like that. But since we chose the column method, Basically, all of our fields come across the first row, across all the columns, and all the information comes here. And then by simply mapping that to the columns on my second sheet here, um, we're able to accomplish this complex format um, pretty quickly and pretty easily. Um, the only thing that you'll need to know is, you know, sometimes, um, you know, writing macros and things of that nature, um, you might not have somebody in your company that's able to do that. Um, there's a lot of pre-built um, already on Google um, where you can Google a specific macro to do something. So, for example, if you were to Google, you know, macro to delete blank rows, um, there's a lot of resources out there that you can use in combination with um, our due forms data that you can just kind of copy and paste from the browser and put in here. Um, so, like I said, the, the macro that we have in here, we have it set to automatically, when, as soon as the document opens, it's going down to this list and it's checking for blank rows. And literally, you could, have, you could find that macro that we're using uh, right on Google by just a simple Google uh, search. Um, so, you don't really need to be a tech wizard or anything like that in order to kind of do these things. Um, you know, we're just basically simply mapping, you know, this column to this column, this cell to this cell. Um, based off of all of this raw data that gets dumped out. Um, so you can use this in combination with any of the tools in Excel. It doesn't need to be macros. It doesn't need to be linking the columns. You know, you can do charts. You can do tables, uh, pivot tables. You can, um, you know, do all types of, you can have pictures and things of that nature in here in combination with your raw data. So basically any of the tools that you, you know, frequently use in Excel, you can use them in combination with the um, do forms data that essentially comes in just like you're seeing on your screen here. So basically, um, when all is said and done, you're able to use the do forms generic reporting tool in combination with these custom templates to get around the um, necessity of having a specific format that you need to get to. So if in any scenario, you have a template or a report that needs uh, more than one submission, because remember, the report writer allows you to take multiple submissions of the same form. So if you have a scenario where you have a template that needs to combine a bunch of information from a singular form in some complex format, you can do so by setting up the format in your Excel template first, then uploading it into DoForms and telling DoForms where to dump your data um, what sheet to dump your data into and then transfer everything over. Um, and as you can see here, it doesn't just have to be raw data. You can set up um, conditions where, um, for example, this one was if there were days away from work, it would put an X mark. You know, you could have had this check mark. Um, you know, I won't go into every single little tool that we've used in here because Excel has a long list of things that you can do. Um, but as you're going through and creating this, if you do have any questions um, or you get stuck anywhere, if you want to know how to do something, you can always reach out to your mobile sales consultant here at DoForms um, and they can help you uh, set this up. Or if they're not sure, they can also escalate it to our engineering team and our engineering team can help you as well. Um, so that's really all there is to know about the templates. Um, aside from that, just jumping back to the report writer in itself, um, the report writer also comes uh, fully built with a schedule. 
So basically, if I were to load this up here and I had scheduled reports, let's say at the end of every month, so the 31st or the 30th of every month, um, basically I could go through my calendar and see when my reports are supposed to be ran. Um, and do forms will hold on to these reports for you for up to seven days. So you'll see here as I'm hovering over the two reports that were created today, um, they're clickable. So if I click on them, it will actually download my report. Um, but then after seven days, the do form system gets rid of it. It will still show you that a report was sent on that date, except it will um, no longer be clickable. So basically, as you go through and schedule these reports, you can have a full blown uh, schedule calendar here to see when everything is supposed to be coming through. Um, you can also run these reports once. Um, so non-recurring um, is a better way of explaining that. So it doesn't have to be every day, every week or every month. If you just have like, let's say every three months, you need to submit a report in a specific format. You could come in here and use the once non-recurring report and run this every three months. Um, and it would only cost you a couple of credits to do so. Um, so on that topic, the report writer does use web credits. Um, so it's essentially a credit to create a report. Now that does not mean that it's a credit for everybody that you send it to. It's just a credit to generate the report itself. So I could generate a report and send it out to 50 different people. It's still only gonna cost you that one credit and credits range anywhere from 20 to 45 cents, uh, essentially a, a credit if you buy a credit package. Um, I think that that is gonna be all on using custom templates in our report builder here. Does anybody have any questions? If so, uh, please feel free to type them into the question section of your GoToMeeting. Um, if not, I am also going to put out my personal email address um, as well as the support email address. If anybody has any additional questions or we didn't go over something that you were looking to cover, please feel free to shoot me an email, give me a call um, or email one of our support guys and we'll be sure to follow up with you. Um, similarly, if you want to get one of these reports created and you have a um, template that you'd like to use in one of these reports, you can also reach out to me or, or your sales uh, mobile sales consultant to go ahead and get that set up. So I'm just going to type in my email address. I'm also going to type in the do forms phone number, which you can call and ask for myself or your mobile sales consultant. Um, and then lastly, I'm going to put the support email in there in case anybody needs that. Um, so like I said, if anybody has any additional questions, please reach out to us. Um, and this webinar will be available on our new video library, doforms.com slash video library. Um, and you can see a, um, a bunch of videos that we have recently updated, including some quick tips, um, as well as any webinars that you might have missed in the past. Um, so feel free to check that out and use that as a resource when you're going through and using do forms in the future. Thanks guys. Uh, I don't think I have any questions here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and end this meeting. Um, I hope everybody enjoys the rest of their day and thank you for your time today. Have a good one.